So let's take a look then at a very basic example of using BEM. And in this video, we're going to focus on the B and the E, so the blocks and the elements. And we'll see how they're named, how we use them. And then in the next video, we'll go on to look at modifiers. All right, so let's say we just have an unordered list. And this is a pretty standard example. So we have an unordered list here and we have list items. And these have text within them. So pretty straightforward. So what would we normally do here if we wanted, for example, an inline list? At the moment, it's just a, a standard uh, bulleted list. So what we would do is we could head over to appsit.css and we could say, well, we want the unordered list to have a list style type of none. We want the padding set to zero and we want the margin set to zero as well. And that would work like that. And then what we could do is we could say something like ULLI and we could say, well, we want these to display as an inline block. So that looks like this. So we've achieved what we want to do. But once again, if we wanted this to be on the navigation, we might say, well, we want this to be a normal uh, list from top to bottom, not inline. So we would say uh, nav ULLI and again, we're getting into that problem. So we already know that this is a problem. So what we're going to do, let's start again. We're going to take a look at this block here. This is a block. These are elements and we want to define a class on our block and every single element. So to do this, we define out the name of the block as a class. So for example, list inline or inline list. So inline list will do for now. And it just looks like a normal CSS selector. Of course, it could just be on its own, so it could just be list, but I'm being a little bit more descriptive here. I'm saying inline list. So I'm going to apply exactly the same styles to this. So our list style type is none. Our padding is zero and our margin is zero. So that looks like this once we add our class to it. So let's just pop this in here, inline list like so. So now what we want to do is style each of the elements within this. So to do this, the naming convention is the block name. So we redefine uh, the block name and then we have two underscores. Then we give the name of the element. So in this case, it's a, a list item. So we say inline list, two underscores and then item. So in this case, it will be display inline block. And now, rather than having to create a descendant selector, we're just creating a very flat structure. So we've already improved the rendering speed from CSS because remember, chaining on and doing descendant selectors are slow. We've already improved that. Now comes the part that most people don't like. And remember, there's nothing necessarily wrong with this. And you'll see this when we write the markup. So let's define out our inline lists item. And of course, what we need to do is exactly the same thing for our other item. So you can already see this starts to look a little bit strange. We've got lots of repetition here. But what you can actually see is it's very clear what's going on here. So we've got an immediate speed improvement We've got a really easy way when we look at the markup, we know, right, an inline list has these styles, an item has these styles. There's no li, ULLI, so we're not being very specific here. Here, we're being very specific, keeping everything in a flat file and looking at the markup, it's very easy to see what's going on. And as we progress through the series and we eventually take a look at SAS, you'll see how much nicer this is to work with. So this now, we know exactly what it is. It's an inline list. We can move it anywhere we want because we have very specific element styles and very specific block styles. We can put it anywhere we want. It's not tied down to any other elements and we can really reuse this. So let's take a look at another very quick example. So let's say uh, we have an avatar and inside of that we have an image. So for now we won't put anything in the image but we have that image there and we have that div there as well. So what we're going to do is define out our avatar. And for example, this could be a width of 50 pixels. It could be 
a height of 50 pixels, whatever. And then inside of here, how do we define the image? Well, of course, we use the convention, the naming convention, and we give the name of the element. So this can be anything. It really is up to your judgment what you call them. There's no hard rules to what you actually name things as long as you follow this convention. So in this case, in actual fact, this might just have a border of one pixel like so, and the image might have these properties and then a border radius, for example. So that could be 100%. So now again, we're seeing a very reusable component that we can move around where we want. And here, we would obviously give our class here, and this would be avatar image. So over in our browser, obviously this doesn't look great at the moment, but you can imagine that it would once you have your image in there. So again, if you wanted to add another element within here, and for example, this was the username, we would call this avatar username, and then we would have the username just in here. And then of course, in here, we define this style out once again. And this could be anything at all. We'll just mess around for now. So there we go. We can see an avatar, an image, and a username, all very clear styles, completely flat. This is really important. And here, we know exactly what's going on. This is very descriptive and very easy to read. Okay, so we've looked at our blocks and elements. Let's just get rid of our avatar example because we're going to focus next on modifiers. So let's jump over and see how these can help us as well, including the readability of our elements.